In this episode, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about growing your own Barbados cherry tree, also known as Acerola, from how much sun does it need, winter protection, what type of root system does the plant have, growth structure, is it a tree, is it a bush, fertilization, watering, does it need a pollinator, when does it fruit, can it even be grown at container long term? And I'm also going to give you my personal growing tips I've learned over the years growing this plant. So stick to the end. Barbados cherry tree is popular for its vitamin C content. Do you know one Barbados cherry has as much vitamin C as five oranges? Yes, it does. Actually, this is where your vitamin C used to come from back in the day. They used to cultivate this plant commercially so they can harvest the fruits, grind it down, and uh, sell it as a, sup a vitamin C supplement. But they don't do that anymore since they created the synthetic form which is a lot cheaper to manufacture than cultivating the tree naturally. So anyways, let's get started with its growing requirements. Barbados cherry tree will take full sun anywhere in the United States. If it takes full sun in my area, it will take full sun in yours. Now, let me tell you something about full sun. If you have your tree in the ground, it needs to be in full sun. If your tree is not growing, well, if it's not water related, it's usually because it's lacking sun. It loves the sun, it just does not like to grow in the shade. The only time they do okay in the shade is if you have your tree in a container. Can you grow in the shade? Of course you can, but it's just not gonna grow as well as if you give it direct sunlight. How much is enough sunlight? That's something that you're gonna have to figure out yourself. But for me, I can tell you the sun comes up at 5.30 in the morning, and then if my tree got direct sunlight until about 10, 11 in the morning, that would be enough sunlight for the entire day. But then I live in the desert, my UV rating here is extremely high, it's super hot, so it just depends in your area. So just as much sunlight, sunlight as you can give it should be enough. Winter protection. This plant in my area is mainly frost sensitive. What that means is if this plant gets wet in the winter time and the water freezes on the plant, whatever the ice touches, it's going to kill your plant. A smaller plant will die a lot faster than one that is rooted in the ground like this one. But even this one here died back all the way down to the ground about two years ago because my frost cover that I had over it, it blew away in the middle of the night and my plant got severe frost damage. But then again, that winter was cold and colder than normal and it got down to 19 degrees. But my plant, thankfully, was rooted in the ground fully and it came back from the root system. As you can see right now, this plant, I don't know if you can tell, it's about six to seven feet tall. Now, another thing you gotta keep in mind is if your temperatures drop in the low 20s for a long time, I'm talking about 12, 24 hours straight, days on end, day and night, or even lower than that, then this plant in your area is going to be cold sensitive. At that point, you will need to cold protect this plant. If you want to learn the difference between frost protection and cold protection, I got links in the description for other videos you can watch on those topics specifically. Now, let's talk about the root system of this plant. The root system of this plant is shallow, but it's also extremely vigorous. Let me show you. This is a three gallon Barbados cherry in a container. This plant has been in this container, I would say for about two years now. We actually grew this one from cutting and we've had it here for a long time and it's completely root bound in this container. You can tell on the surface, you have a lot of fibrous roots right here, and this is gonna be mainly the type of root system your plant's going to have. But also, as the plant gets older, it's, the root system is gonna thicken up. Let me show you. So this right here, it's going to be mainly the type of root system your Barbados cherry is going to have. It's extremely vigorous and it's also shallow, it only goes in the ground a few feet. Now, it's safe to plant closer structures. 
because it's not going to damage your foundation your fences or anything like that but if you have a sewage pipe going underneath it since the roots of this plant are very fibrous and tiny you may have issues with the root system of this plant going into your sewer pipes so make sure you keep a distance between this plant and plumbing pipes around your house grove structure this plant mainly it's going to be a bush it will branch out from the bottom all the way up this plant usually normally the biggest one i've seen personally was about 15 feet but the one that i saw in person that was 15 feet tall was pruning as a tree if you want to prune it as a tree what you are going to do is you are going to trim all the lower branches right here and keep a single trunk that is going to force the plant like this one right here to grow straight up but it's also going to try to keep growing lower branches until the plant gets a lot older so for at least the first few years in the ground you want to keep pruning all this on the bottom if you want your plant to be a tree if you want your plant to be a bush or a shrub don't do anything the plant will do it naturally it's just going to grow like mine right here it's all over the place it's hard to see because i have my ruby x guava back there just overgrowing everything but this plant it's about i would say from here to over there it's about eight feet wide right now and it's just going to get taller when you keep things a shrub it, normally they will get between about 8 to 12 feet tall but the good thing about having them as a bush is you're gonna get a lot more branches and with a lot more branches you're also going to get a lot more flowers more flowers means more fruit does this plant need a pollinator no this plant is self-pollinating meaning the flowers have male and female organs in them and that's the reason why you don't need another plant now one thing you gotta keep in mind is your plant will flower when it's fully rooted in the ground or fully rooted in the container normally when these plants are growing its root system they don't like to flower as much and even if they do flower a lot of your flowers are going to drop this is the reason why when you first put your Barbados cherry in the ground you're not going to see much fruit for the first year or two until your plant gets older this is normal this is not because you need a pollinator this is simply because your plant needs to get older and fully established before it will start flowering vigorously now let's talk about fruiting when does this plant fruit this plant fruiting season is going to be during the growing season when the night temperatures are hot in my area i don't start seeing flowers until my night temperatures get about 70 80 degrees plus when i start seeing the flowers it takes between six to eight weeks for them to actually go from flower to fruit so and this happens throughout the growing season and once the night temperatures drop then they stop flowering as much and as soon as it gets cold at night not daytime then they will stop and they don't resume flowering again until the following year when the night temperatures get about 70 80 degrees again in my area that does not happen until late april actually no may all the way into may sometimes you may get some flowers in april but for your plant to consistently flower and fruit it's just not going to happen in my area until may so remember it's all about the night temperatures it's not about your day temperatures all the time of the year it's all going to be about the immediate temperatures are on your plant now remember six to eight weeks to go from flowers to fruit now this barbados right here this cherry it's not ready to eat there's one right here on the ground it's a little darker you can see the color the color difference this one's darker this one's lighter but even this one right here it's not fully ripe look at the picture on the screen right now once they start turning black they will turn black that's when they are at the sweetest if you eat them when they're this color right here or even this color here they are going to be more tart than sweet and that is all right most people grow this cherry simply because of all the health benefits not so much of the flavor but yes they are sweet but you have to wait until they're black the problem when they're black is they will drop immediately these cherries will not stay on the tree once they're fully ripened 
Can you pick them early and let them ripen on the counter? Yes, you can, but the flavor is not going to be fully there. The shelf, shelf life on this fruit is not long. So keep that, keep that in mind if you want to eat this fruit. What does the fruit uh, look like on the inside? Well, let me show you. That's what it looks like right there. Um, and it has a few seeds on the inside and they are very sweet. You can eat the whole thing. But like I said, you're gonna have several seeds on the inside. Um, but that is a fruit of the Barbados cherry. Let's talk about watering. If you have your Barbados cherry tree in a container, you're going to follow the 50% rule. That is, wait until 50% of whatever container you plant this in is dry, and however long it takes to go from wet to 50% dry, that is how often you are going to water. It's that simple. If you want a more detailed explanation on how to water your container plant, link in the description. I have another video where I teach you in details how to water your container plants. Now, if your Barbados cherry tree is in the ground, like this one right here, then the first year, you are going to follow the finger method. That is, you water your plant and then you stick your finger in there and when you no longer feel moisture on the tip of your finger, however long that takes, that's exactly how often you're going to water for the first year. As your tree gets older, remember your plant has a vigorous shallow root system. So the root system of this plant doesn't go that, that deep in the ground, so you don't really need to deep water. But you are going to need to water often. Now another good thing about Barbados cherry is it is drought tolerant. But remember. Drought tolerant just means it takes longer for the plant to die without water compared to another plant that is now drought tolerant. That's it. That's the only difference. If you, plant, if you want your plant to grow, if you want tons of flowers, you want tons of fruits, you're going to need to water. Because if you don't water your plant, even though it will take longer to die without water, it's just not going to grow or give you fruits. So make sure you water your plant regularly. As long as your soil drains the water, you will never be able to overwater this plant. Extremely difficult. The only way you're gonna overwater this plant is if you water, and that water just pulls in that area and it never dries. It just sits under water for months, if not years. That will be the only time you're going to be able to overwater this plant. So water regularly, but the good thing about it is if you forget to water, it's no big deal. It's not going to die. Let's talk about fertilization. If you have your plant in a container, all you need is any slow-release fertilizer. The numbers are irrelevant. They don't care. Any slow-release fertilizer will do. Now, if your plant's in the ground like mine, all you need is any organic fertilizer. Compost, uh, cow poop, chicken poop, uh, bat poop, whatever poop you want to use, just put it in the ground on the surface away from your plant and then put mulch over it so it doesn't dry out and then water it in that's it it's that simple even if you don't fertilize it, it's fine I mean I don't do anything with my plant right here and it's growing it's flowering it's fruiting and I, I mean I hardly ever do anything guys so if I can grow this plant so can you can you grow this plant in a container of course you can now the thing you have to understand is this plant has a vigorous root system, meaning if your temperatures are ideal in your area, your plant will root out that container very fast. Now, this plant right here is root bound. So how much longer can I keep it in that container without damaging the plant? If I keep it on my automatic watering, where I don't have to worry about my plant getting watered because it's automatic, I can easily keep it in this container for another year. At that point, What's going to happen is the plant will start acting as if it's bone dry even if you water it and it will start taking damage even though you water because the plant is so root bound it's just not going to be able to drink the water at that point so that's why as your plants get root bound in the container you want to up pot them into a bigger container so this is a three gallon right here so from this size you go just a few inches wider a few inches deeper and depending on your temperatures this plant will survive in that new container for another year to two years 
but your plant will always keep on growing and you always have to keep up potting it. Another good thing about this root system right here, it is not sensitive. So let's say this is the container you want to keep it in forever because you don't have any space. So what you do is you can root prune. So during the growing season, which is right now, you will take this plant out of the container and you will probably cut about an inch all the way around the root ball and on the bottom. Then you put it back into the same container with fresh potting mix, but then you wanna prune this canopy back about 25% to 50%. And then you just bought yourself another year in this container. So your choices are actually two. You can root prune your plant if you wanna keep it in a container forever, or you keep you can keep on potting it. But never get your Barbados cherry from this size into a massive container, like this 45 gallon right here. Is it going to die? No, it's not. But guess what's going to happen? Your plant for one, it's not gonna grow for a long time because it's going to take a very long time to root this new container. And once it's rooted fully in that container, then it will start to grow. But then your plant is going to be fully rooted in that container and then eventually it will become root bound and then guess what's going to happen are you going to go in, into an even bigger container so what are your choices once you get to this big size right here so it's up to you guys what you want to do that brings us to my personal growing tips that you will not be able to find anywhere online because what i'm about to tell you it's everything that i personally learned over the years from growing this plant. The first one is, this plant will only grow when the night temperatures are hot. How hot is hot? Well, I usually don't start seeing any growth out of this plant until the night temperatures are at least, I would say, 78 uh, degrees minimum. Maybe some root growth around 60, but to be honest, for you to visually see active growth, it does not happen until it gets super hot at night. So the growing season for this plant in my area is usually around May all the way through around September and then it starts slow and slowing down, even if it remains hot during daytime. The second thing I've learned about growing this plant is it will take full sun all day, even here in the desert, 120 degrees direct sun, no issues. The only problem that I've seen are the flowers. The flowers at such extreme temperatures, they will wilt and drop. So do not expect flowers to remain, if you live in an area with extreme temperatures in the summer, to remain there during the summer in full sun. They are just not gonna do it. They're gonna wilt and drop. So most of your fruits are going to be on the inner canopy. But don't worry about it. As your plant gets older, the plant itself will be able to shade its own flowers and they will be fine. But even though the flowers take damage in full sun, extreme full sun, like in my area, do not plant your, your tree in the shade. They don't grow in the shade. If you have a Barbados cherry tree and you've had it for several years and your plant's just not growing and you know for sure it's not a water issue, guess what? Your plant's too shaded. It's not going to grow if it's in the shade. I learned this by making that mistake. Now, the only time that I've seen them grow in the shade somewhat, it's going to be if you keep them in a container. That will be the only reason. Another thing that I've learned about this plant is winter protection. If your plant is fully rooted in the ground, it will tolerate more cold temperatures, colder temperatures in the winter time than another plant that is not rooted in the ground. That's why I recommend planting this tree early in the season so that way it has all that time to grow some roots in the ground before the winter hits. The more roots in the ground, the stronger the plant gets. But remember, if you drop into the low 20s for a long time or even lower, no amount of roots is going to save your plant. You will need to call protect it. And the last personal tip that I have about this plant is you only need one to get fruits. A lot of people are gonna tell you you need several to get fruits because you need a, a, a cross pollinator or another plant to pollinate it with. That is not true. The reason you will not see fruits out of your plant the first year is because once you put it in the ground, in most places, in warm climates, this plant will take at least one full year in the ground 
to somewhat root itself in the ground to the point where it will start to actually grow up. Until then, it's normal not to get any top growth out of your plant until it's fully rooted in the ground. And that is true for most of my plants here. But it's also true for Barbados cherry tree. And remember, it needs really hot night temperatures for them to vigorously grow. So if your plant's not growing and you're in the middle of the winter, early spring, or you're in the fall, that is normal. It's probably too cold at night or your plant is not even fully rooted in the ground yet. So give it time and it will grow. Once it's fully rooted in the ground, it will start to flower. And the older the plant gets, the more flowers it will be able to hold and the more fruits you are going to get. So that's it guys. That was everything I know about growing Barbados cherry tree or acerola. Hopefully this helps you out. If you have any further questions, comment below. Join us on social media. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button, notification bell, and I will see you next time.